experts have warned that a bird flu pandemic could be 100 times worse than COVID and kill up to half of those infected. The White House has stated that it is monitoring the situation. Virus experts warned during a briefing that the H5N1 type of bird flu might now be dangerously close to starting a pandemic. The probability of the virus evolving to become more transmissible is increased by several occurrences of infection in a range of species, including cows, cats, and more recently, humans, scientists said. Others in attendance at the conference, however, argued that it was premature to panic because there were still too many unanswered questions regarding recent incidents. We take the health and safety of the American people seriously, a White House representative stated today, adding that the administration was monitoring avian flu in the country. Following reports that a dairy farm worker in Texas tested positive for the virus, along with 12 herds of cows in six states and three cats in Texas who later passed away, the panel was swiftly assembled. The workers' tests revealed that the patient's virus had already mutated to spread more readily. Nevertheless, the CDC stated that this mutation had already been documented, that the danger was minimal, and that there was no indication of transfer from person to person. Researchers studying bird flu, physicians, and government representatives who were concerned about the human case of bird flu attended the briefing. The meeting was arranged by John Fulton, a pharmaceutical industry consultant for vaccines and the founder of the Canadian pharmaceutical business BioNiagara, in response to inquiries from the media. Dr. Suresh Kuchipudi, a bird flu expert from Pittsburgh, cautioned at the briefing, saying, This virus has been on the top of the pandemic list for many, many years and probably decades. And right now, the possibility that this virus may start a pandemic is quite real. H5N1 viruses have already shown a number of critical characteristics of a possible pandemic virus, he continued. These include the fact that the virus is already widely spread over the world and that, although being mistakenly thought to be an avian virus, it is actually capable of infecting a variety of mammals, including humans. We are talking about a virus that is circulating, present worldwide, and has already infected a variety of mammals. We are not really talking about a virus that has not yet made a leap. Therefore, I believe that this virus, which is widespread around the world, poses the biggest threat of a pandemic and is acting in plain sight. It is imperative that we get ready. Fulton, who cautioned that the H5N1 strain of influenza A might start a pandemic worse than COVID, shared his concerns. This seems to be 100 times worse than COVID. He stated, adding that, it could be if it mutates and keeps its high case fatality rate. We can only hope that as it mutates to infect people, the fatality rate will decline. Based on the 462 deaths that have been documented since 2003 among the 887 individuals who have been diagnosed with the virus, the World Health Organization calculates that the fatality rate for H5N1 is 52%. In contrast, COVID now kills less than 0.1% of those infected with it. However, at the start of the epidemic, this number was closer to 20%. 7 out of 26 cases of H5N1 infection have resulted in death, or approximately 30% of cases since the new strain of bird flu first appeared and spread over the world in 2020. Certain specialists caution that H5N1 may cause pneumonia in more severe but uncommon cases by infecting the respiratory system. It can also spread to other parts of the body, like the eyes, where it can cause inflammation. A microbiologist in New Brunswick named Dr. Gabriel Gerard cautioned that despite the low number of human cases, the H5N1 fatality rate was currently close to 50%. However, in the event that the virus did begin to spread, he predicted that it would probably drop, but remain high. Because patients do not yet have a defense against newer infectious diseases, the virus can elude the immune system and produce a more serious infection, which is why these diseases have high mortality rates. Nonetheless, some panelists, such Professor David Swain, who has spent decades studying animal cases of bird flu, urged composure. At this time, there is no knowledge regarding the cattle cases, 
so it's easy for the alarm to be raised. He stated that we have a big knowledge gap that needs to be filled. Let's examine the facts rationally. Given the knowledge gaps that need to be filled, we don't really know that much about them right now. People not professionally involved in pandemic prevention slash mitigation being worried slash feeling miserable now won't make any meaningful difference to what may hit us, except that their life will stink, far more than it should, continued UK epidemiologist Dr. Francois Below on X this morning. A virus must be easily transmissible between humans and animals in order to become a pandemic. With investigations on sick cattle ongoing, Experts have yet to determine if the virus may now pass from mammal to mammal. When questioned about the U.S. avian flu outbreak today, the White House press secretary responded, This is something we are certainly monitoring. We take the health and safety of the American people seriously, and the CDC has been working and concentrating on this. For this president, it is really crucial. Keeping communities informed, safe, and healthy is our first priority. As of right now, 12 farms in six states, including five in Texas, as well as farms in New Mexico, Michigan, Ohio, Idaho, and Kansas, have reported cases of H5N1 infections in their cows. In Iowa, tests are also conducted on cows. Lethargic cattle are said to eat less and produce less milk when they are infected. Nevertheless, their diseases are not killing them. However, it's unclear how the cows contracted the disease, whether it was through contact with contaminated bird carcasses, droppings, or some other source. Furthermore, it's unclear if the animals are contracting the virus from one source, like their food, or if it's spreading among them. The majority of cases nationwide have been traced back to farms located in Texas. Numerous questions remain regarding the human case, one of which being how the patient contracted the infection. It might have come by coming into close contact with cows or from touching their faces after coming into contact with a virus-contaminated surface. Experts believe that while numerous mammals are affected, they specifically concentrate on one species, pigs. Since these animals' lungs have the same receptors as people, an outbreak in one species may indicate a comparable event in humans. However, pig infections are not currently being reported. On the other hand, a patient in Pennsylvania was hospitalized earlier this year after being diagnosed with a pig-borne flu infection, but they recovered completely. The person got infected with the H1N2 strain of influenza A, which is marginally distinct from H5N1, after having intimate contact with swine. Researchers caution that pigs may also contract both human and avian flu viruses simultaneously, which could lead to gene swapping, or reassortment which could produce a novel strain of the virus. However, the situation may have more effects than just spreading fear, as the cost of milk and eggs is probably going to increase. When bird flu is discovered, egg producers are forced to slaughter all of their birds, which takes months to recover from. Milk from infected cows cannot be sold. This was the cause of the 2020 egg price spike which saw a dozen large, grade-A eggs go from $1.72 to $3.59 in the year ending in November 2022. They were at $4.82 for a dozen eggs at their highest point. According to officials, the risk of catching bird flu via milk is extremely low because the majority of the supply is pasteurized, which renders bacteria and viruses inactive before milk is sent to retail outlets. In 2020, a wild bird flu that had mingled genes with a domestic poultry virus caused bird flu to become widespread. It spread quickly through migratory birds, and after two baby foxes in the Netherlands tested positive for the disease in May 2021, it was determined to have passed the bird mammal barrier for the first time. One passed away from the infection, while the other's symptoms led to their euthanasia. Although the exact mode of infection was unknown, Experts surmise that it was probably by consuming an infected bird's carcass. The first case was subsequently identified in a human, Alan Gosling, 79, of the United Kingdom, in January 2022.